Ravens, it's time to wake up, man. Hey, look, it's it's February 13th. Super Bowl's over. It's done. It's, it's a wrap. It's finished. And I'm already hearing reports that the Eagles offensive coordinator is on his way, flying to Indy already so he can be officially announced and introduced as their head coach. So they moving already. They moving already. So Ravens, hey. It's time to get stuff shaking, baby. It's time to get stuff shaking. We need to be hearing about, all right, Ravens, they they flying out, whether it's going to be Eric Bieniemy, whether they going to fly out um, the, the Chiefs QB coach, Brian Johnson, whatever you're going to do, it, it's time to get on it ASAP because the clock's ticking, baby. The clock's ticking. And I, I put this video out extra early just so y'all could see it extra early. Sometimes I feel like y'all be watching. But anyway, good morning. Team, keep it clean. How you doing? Amazing Super Bowl last night. It was a great game from start to finish. And again, like we talked about last night, didn't like the call. Didn't like the call how it officially ended the game, but it was the right call. It was the right call. And it's like you, you never want to call to change the game, but he did hold him. And if, uh, like, y'all yeah, yeah, know, if, if had that been the Ravens, anybody saying it was a bad call, had that been the Ravens, then I, then nobody would be saying, oh, that, that's a bad call. But anyway, um, good morning. We up. Hopefully, Steve Bishotti, Eric DaCosta, and John Harbaugh, hopefully y'all are up too. Because we up. We awake. I tried to sleep in a little bit, but it just don't be working. I even took some tea last night to, to help me go to sleep and help me stay asleep. Didn't work. Hardly ever works. But anyway, that's beside the point. Ravens, hey, it's time, man. Anyway, um, Ravens, uh, their script might be flipped just a bit uh, because, of course, the, the report came out yesterday that they were interested in uh, talking to Eric Bieniemy, who just, man, this t I don't know what it is, man. This dude gets credit for nothing. Nobody ever gives him credit for nothing. Anytime it's a nice play, oh, it's Andy Reid. Anytime it's a nice something, oh, it's Andy Reid. And, I, hey, give credit to Andy Reid now, but Eric Benjamin don't be getting nothing, no kind of credit for nothing. Now, I know Andy Reid did prop him up last night. He said that uh, in the second half. He said that was Eric Benjamin calling the plays and stuff down the stretch. Um... And was it, well, is he trying to get a third round pick or something like that? I don't know, but I, I mean, I'm sure he uh, he feels like Eric bien is on his way out. That's what it's seeming like. Uh, but we won't know till we know. But anyway, uh, the report came out yesterday that the uh, Ravens are interested in talking to bien and also to uh, Brian Johnson, the Eagles QB coach. Now, um, specifically with the Eagles QB coach, and we, we touched on this briefly yesterday, but just to give everybody an update, um, with him he could have two opportunities for a promotion to offensive coordinator that ain't got nothing to do with the Ravens. One of them would be if he went, cause you know, when coaches come from a team, like their, their current Eagles offensive coordinator is going to be the head coach of the Colts. When they go to a new team, they like bringing some of their boys on with them. Like they like putting some of their own, their, their previous staff. They like taking some guys from there and be like, all right, hey, you come through, come, come, come be my coach over here. So with Eagles offensive coordinator, I want to say Steve And the, the last name is just It's not clicking right now I know it starts with an S It's like Sarkinson or something like that I forget My apologies Don't don't be too mad at me Because I forgot his name My apologies But anyway um, With the Eagles offensive coordinator Getting ready to take the job in Indy He could be like Look Brian Hey You was my QB coach um, So I want you to be my offensive coordinator You know how we run things in Philly Or how we ran things in Philly Let's run it over here with Indianapolis. So that and that happens all the time. It happens all the time. So it would not be no shocker. Like I, I always thought that um, I obviously didn't work out this way, but I always thought that like if if Greg Roman was to get a job as a uh, head coach somewhere, if somebody was gonna be like, hey, Greg Roman, we we want him to be a head coach, I always feel like he would he would have taken uh, James Urban with him, because Greg Roman was an offensive coordinator with the Ravens. James Urban was a QB coach. I feel like they would have went off together. But anyway. Um, so that's one opportunity that he would have, Brian Johnson. But then they also are talking about how he could end up staying. He could end up staying with the Eagles, and he can get a promotion right there. 
So you ain't got to go to no situation where it's unknown at the quarterback position with the Ravens. You ain't got to go to no situation where you just you, you don't know what you're going to be provided with with the Ravens. You you could stay right there and get a promotion. You still with Philly. You had a lot of success with Philly, and you could be put into an even better role. Uh, going from, or not even necessarily a better role, but a more prominent role, going from QB coach to offensive coordinator, that's a big promotion. That's a significant promotion. So that could be something that he gets offered, and it's like, oh, that's like not an offer you can't refuse, but, you know, Philly's going to take care of him if he does that, if he get a promotion. So it, it, basically what I'm saying is it's not looking like it's going to be uh, Brian Johnson to the Ravens. I don't even think they're going to get a chance to even interview him. I just, I don't see it happening. Um, Eric Bieniemy, that is a likely interview. It's nothing set in stone, obviously, but it is a uh, likely interview um, because he's open. He's open. Like, he ain't flying on no plane to go be no head coach right now, which is unfortunate because, again, he he been there for, what, five years? Two Super Bowl, no, two Super Bowl championship wins. Three Super Bowl appearances, uh, and the the lowest that their offense has been has been five. That's that's the lowest rank that their offense has been since he's been there. And okay, you know, of course, Andy Reid been there too, but it's since Eric Bieniemy been there, that lowest offensive rank is five. So that says a whole lot. Um, and w- again, with him, like again, I, I know people like, oh man, he doesn't even call all the plays. Some people think he doesn't call any plays. So what does he do? What 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 does he do? What what does Eric B enemy do? Since a lot of people feel like he does not call the place. What does he do? He ain't a QB coach. He ain't a wide receivers coach. He ain't a running backs coach. His title's offensive coordinator, so he got to coordinate some type of the offense, right? And again, it takes me back to what I said before. People were uh, they tripping out because they said, "Oh yeah, Eric B enemy don't call all the plays," but QB coaches don't call plays. They don't be calling no plays, but people be wanting them. So I, I just I, I don't be I don't be understanding that. What's the difference? So you you want somebody that you know doesn't call plays versus somebody who you're not sure if they don't call plays or not. not anyway, um, my guy uh, JT he he brought up some good points though about Eric B. Enemy. Whenever the the Chiefs players, whenever they speak. Uh, about oh well, what, what do you owe your success to? Like they always they always ask Travis Kelsey every single interview. Hey, why why are you so wide open? Why are you so wide open? And hey, Andy Reid, Andy Reid, then Patrick Mahomes. Hey, oh Andy Reid. They always give a shout out to Andy Reid, and and a lot of times they don't they won't give a shout out to uh, Eric Bieniemy. It's weird. It's weird, and I, I I told my guy JT I said, hey, maybe they maybe it's like a beef or something. Maybe they got like a little internal beef or something. I don't know what it is, man. I have no clue. But it's it's just it's a weird dynamic that I just I don't know about. Maybe I got I gotta hook up with somebody who's a, a Chiefs fan and ask them like, hey, what is going on with that? Or like, what what is that? Because they obviously would have a lot more insight than I would or we would. Um, but at the same time, uh, I, I like what uh, Odell Beckham Jr., he, he tweeted about something last night. And he said that uh, the Giants, he said, oh, he said uh, the, he got traded from, or the, he said they traded him away too. That was right after Kadarius Tony uh, had made, that was either after his touchdown, or, I think that was after his uh, 65-yard punt return in a game last night. But Odell Beckham Jr. tweeted, yeah, he said that they traded him away too. And he said it's all about situation. All about situation. And that's true. That, that, that is so true. Uh, being in the right situation, can it, it, it can change everything. Everything. Take, for instance, players that get drafted. Say, for instance, a quarterback that gets drafted. Say, for instance, Johnny Manziel. So if Johnny Manziel would have went to a different team, his career could have possibly worked out so much better. And that's the first example that I thought of. But <laughs> had he went to a different team, his career could have worked out so much better. But, you know, the Browns, they, it's been a rotating door quarterback for the longest. For the longest. Even uh, even maybe, maybe Baker Mayfield, too. Even though with Brian Dallas, like, like they gave him a lot, though. They gave Baker Mayfield a lot, man. They gave him a lot to work with, a lot of weapons and stuff, and it just didn't work out. But anyway, it's, it, 
situation makes such a big difference because you could be the right person, but in a wrong situation. But now you look at Eric Bieniemy; he's, he's in a good situation over there with KC. He's, a, he's in a great situation over there with KC. But if if I'm Eric Bieniemy, then I'm not getting credit for anything. If if I'm not getting credit for anything, I'm not getting respect for anything. It's been years of me not getting respected for anything, like anything. Every time you hear people talk about something, they, like you hear two people talk about something with the Ravens, like, oh, it was a really nice run play. Oh, man, Greg Roman was on it. Greg Roman, whoa, what a great design by Greg Roman. What a great play design by Greg Roman. You hear people talk about the Chiefs. They say the head coach. They say Andy Reid. And we know Andy Reid plays a big part in that now. We get that. But you don't never hear them say Eric B. Enemy. Like, when you're watching Ravens games, you don't never hear nobody say, oh, what a great play design by John Harbaugh. No, because he don't do that. He ain't got nothing to do with that. I mean, he, he got his part in the game plan and whatnot, but the design and all that, setting, up, setting all that stuff up, no, man. He let his coordinators do that. But with Eric B. Enemy as a coordinator, they don't say nothing about him. Like, nothing. Nothing. So it's crazy, but if, if, if I put myself in Eric Bieniemy's shoes and, yeah, I'm part of a team and I know people are like, oh, well, the grass isn't always greener. It's not always greener. And while the grass is certainly green over there with KC, as a man, you want to be respected for your work that you put in. You, 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 you want to reap the benefits of the work that you put in. And granted, they, they do nothing but win over there with Kansas City. But... When, when you like think about like, hey, I, I played a part in this, I played a part in that, I did that, 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 and that. You want to be respected for it and you want to be like sort of honored for it. You don't get that though. So I could not blame him. It, it would not be because I know a lot of people, and I've said it myself before because initially I thought that like, man, if, if Eric Bieniemy went from offensive coordinator with the Chiefs to offensive coordinator with somebody else, that'd be a lateral move. It really wouldn't. It would not. It would not be a lateral move. Because he would be the offensive coordinator. He, it would be him. It wouldn't be, oh, he, especially if it was with the Ravens. Because, you know, <laughs> Harbaugh ain't going to be calling no plays. Harbaugh, <laughs> be like, hey, here, Harbaugh calls the plays. Here, here's a headset. What? No? Who you think you are? Who you think I am, buddy? I ain't calling no plays, buddy. No. Harbaugh's like, no, no, no. I, I, now, I challenge some stuff now. Hold up now. I challenge some stuff, and I, I call some timeouts, baby. If I ain't calling no plays, that's for my OCs and my DCs. But, yeah, man, if he were to go to the Ravens, he would be calling all the plays there. All of them. All of them. So, whatever happened, good, bad, happy, sad, up, down, left, right, whatever happened, it would be him. It would be on him. The credit would go to him. So it's not a lateral move. It would not be a lateral move for Eric Bieniemy to become a, an offensive coordinator. Now, of course, uh, head coach. Like his name last year, I don't think so so much, but years past, his name had just been floating around. These head coaching opportunities. He's been having interviews too. But nothing happened. Nothing happened. And it's not like to be a head coach, you got to call plays. No, you, to be a head coach, you just got to display good leadership. You know, Eric B. Enemy from, like, back in his, like, Vikings days and stuff. And he was the Eagles, with, not the Eagles, with the, uh, the Chiefs. Like, he's showing he could be a leader. But he just didn't get the opportunity. So, I guess you got to make a different move. Got to approach stuff differently. I'm not sure if the interviews went bad. I'm not sure if they were looking at his resume and like, oh, uh, uh, I, I don't know what it was. But it's just it's, it's, it's just been this weird dynamic surrounding Eric Bieniemy for years. So when it's this weird dynamic surrounding you, and you, if, you, if you really are trying to move forward or move up or whatnot, it's like, all right, let me approach this differently. And, and it sucks that it got to be that way. It, it really sucks that it has to be that way for him. It's tough. It's very frustrating and tr speaking from personal experience because you personal, personal experience in the workforce, you could be putting in all this work for something. You could be a big part of something and you, you're just not getting the credit for it. You deserve. Oh, I, I remember that at, at my previous job before we started doing this full time. I never forget because it just 
it it it, it changed the way that I looked at stuff, and it was just such a tough experience and a frustrating experience because it's like, man. And then you apply for other jobs and stuff. You apply to get a promotion, and you don't get it. You like, I, I know I can do that. I know I'm qualified. And then you see people around you. You see you see them get the promotions. You see them get the credit, and you're like, what, really? And that can really hurt you inside. But you can either sit there and cry about it, complain about it, be frustrated about it. And I did all those things. <laughs> I did all those things for sure. I ain't going to say I'm going to act like I didn't because I did. But then eventually you pivot in a different direction. You move differently because you see things differently. And you realize, hey, okay, yeah, life's not fair. And it's unfortunate it's very unfortunate, but you move differently now, and you got to do some things differently, and you got to, yeah, you got you to put in a little extra work, but it is what it is. The end result is uh, what matters the most, um, so hopefully with Eric B. Enemy, um, thing, things will work out for him, whether it's with the Ravens or not. Uh, I hope that it is with the Ravens, but whether it's with the Ravens or not, but anyway, um, Ravens, we... Uh, it's it's time, it's time. So the time right now is eight fifty a.m. Depending on how the internet wants to act right now, uh, y'all see this video maybe like mm, probably like nine thirty because you know, it, my internet just be so slow. But um anyway, uh, it's time. We need to be seeing reports. Say hey, Ravens brought this person in. Ravens scheduled an interview with this person. Ravens talking to this person. Da 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 da. That's what we want to see today. Today needs to be a very busy day for Baltimore. So we're going to see how they act. We're going to see what they do and who they talk to and really who they don't talk to. Because, hey, this is going to be a very busy week in the NFL. Super Bowl's over. It's time for guys to get hired. Ravens, wake up.